Welcome to Business Reporter's Future of Mobile campaign. I'm Rachel Hicks. With some top-of-the-range smartphones now costing upwards of £1,000 and mid-priced models gradually disappearing, an increasing demand for used devices is starting to outstrip supply. Hundreds of millions of unused smartphones are owned privately and corporately across the globe, but most of them never make it to the second-hand market. The idea of trading in old mobiles and our private data ending up in the wrong hands might make us uneasy as individuals, but businesses have even more to lose. New users may take possession of their mission-critical data if it's not removed professionally from their old devices. So how can the life cycle of these ubiquitous devices be extended without compromising the security of their previous owners? Could we be making better use of their valuable components? And what can carriers, smartphone processors and other players in the supply chain do to de-risk the smartphone recovery process? Well, that's what we're going to discuss with Alan Bentley from Blanco today. Good morning, Alan. Good morning, Rachel. Now, when it comes to data security and protection, can you paint a picture for us of the size, the complexity and the dangers of the second-hand mobile phone market? Yeah, of course, Rachel. I think the important thing to think about there is the size and complexity and the, the, the newness of the, of the market we're talking about. So if you think about the second-hand phone market, it's only been around for a few years and you compare that to other technology and industries which have been here for a long time. So the issue has been it's been an explosive growth. So it's gone from being an industry that was really set up uh, in the first place to look at reducing second-hand phones going into landfills to now being worth over £50 billion and having a, you know over 250 million smartphones going into that second-hand device market annually. So it's a very, very quick market in terms of its growth. So there's a, a vast amount of people that are touching the phone through that ecosystem. So the, what that does is it drives a challenge around understanding what that process is and how it removes danger to the end user. And the, the real issue around the data and the data clearance in that ecosystem is making sure that you've got a very clear path to understand that the data doesn't exist anymore on the phone. And I think that that's what drives the biggest challenge in the marketplace today. That's the concern, isn't it? That we've heard stories that sensitive data, personal data can still be retrievable even after uh, a phone has been reset on its factory settings. So is that mistrust of individuals? Justified? I think it is in circumstance. So if you look at it, there's two ways I'd look at that. And one would be the technical way, and that's a very technical conversation about what does a factory reset actually do. Uh, you know, to give you a couple of examples, is it cryptographic erasure? Do I do a data sanitization, which is actually an overwrite where all the data is moved with, you know, and there's different ways that you can technically deal with data erasure or data sanitization on a phone. So that's one thing is a technical conversation or discussion about the security around the, the methodology. I think the other thing that's more important to a consumer is understanding the chain of custody. So who is actually responsible for the doing of the data erasure and can they prove it's been done? And in most cases, when you look at factory reset, it's actually quite difficult to prove uh, and have a certificate or an audit trail. And I think that's the most important thing when you talk about trust is that you understand that uh, an organisation is taking the necessary steps and can actually prove those to- they've to- taken those steps. You talked a moment ago about data sanitisation. Can that and mobile diagnostic software help solve some of the problems we're talking about? I think absolutely. It solves problems for both sides of the fence. It solves the problem for the actual um, industry itself in terms of automating the process. I think the more manual operators are involved in any uh, process, the more opportunity there is for mistakes to be made. And I think then if you run a more automated process that has uh, validation and certification at the end of it, you can always prove that you've done and taken the steps necessary to eradicate data from the device. Where does the mobile phone market stand on mobile grading and making sure that that's standardised? That is a very interesting question and one of the questions that I talk to people about a lot. So there is 
a great movement to try and standardise grading around the world, but it's a very difficult challenge because if you think most most uh, players in the industry have their own standard of grading, which doesn't really help the consumer because as a consumer, you and I would like to think if a phone is graded an A grade or a B grade or a C grade, we know what that means. Somebody could explain it to us so we knew what we were buying. When uh, different industry players use different grading mechanisms, it's very complicated and complex for us, the user. So there's an organisation in North America called CTIA, which has been driving very hard getting grading as a standard across North America, and they're looking to bring that into Europe as well. I think generally the industry would be far better served if they could get to a point where we all kind of understood what, what grade the phone was and what that actually meant as a grade. I think it's a, a bit of a way off, but I certainly think it's a goal that most of the uh, larger processes around the world will be aiming to achieve. Okay, so that's something to, to look to in the future, mm. to see evolving. How else do you see the used smartphone market evolving over, say, the next five years? So I think over the next five years, I think the key thing is what we talked about right at the beginning is the trust. You know, m most of us don't trade in a device for either we don't trust the person we're going to sell it to or we don't trust the phone we're going to buy. And so trust is a big issue. But if you think about the size of the market we talked about at the beginning of, of the interview here, and we, we look at the size of it now, but we also think, well, probably half of people with a smartphone have never traded one. I mean, they've probably just got one lying around in their desk at home or bedroom or whatever it is. So there's a trust issue that we need to get over. But I think if you, if you really think about the evolution of the, of the devices and the price of the devices, as we talked earlier, those prices are going up. It becomes more challenging, I think, for us as consumers to say, well, I bought a phone for, say, £800 a year ago, and now I'd like a new model at £1,100, and I'm just going to throw away that £800. It's like, OK, I, I, need to, I need to get some residual value out of that phone. So I, I can only see that the second-hand phone market will continue to grow very, very quickly as the price of new phones on the market maintain a higher price. Alan Bentley from Blanco, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Rachel.